Hello and welcome to the return of the pre-match meal podcast. I'm here with Kieran Burns from the All About About It All About Ability podcast. Kieran, how are you doing? Well, it's Stephen. It's good to be back. I know uh, it's good to finally do this in person. We're usually air Zoom. I know, I know. It's uh, it's, it's weird seeing your face in person because it's uh, we both get faces for radio. So <laughs> so I faces for radio and legs for an amputee. No, I'm talking. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's a first joke. Eh? No. <laughs> Two guys with cerebral palsy bringing you a talk show about football. It's like cerebral. It's like Susan Boyle running a beauty contest. So I say, but no. Thank, thank. <laughs> Speaking of, speak for yourself. I'm a Scottish international. Hi. <laughs> Well, th- no. uh, first of all, before we start, thanks to the guys here at Sonny Govan for having us in here at the studio. It's a, it's a nice space, a uh, wee bit tight for the wheelchairs, but we managed it. Um, but no, uh, let's get into it. It's been a big week in the Scottish Cup. I'm going to start with my own team. Motherwell 2, Aberdeen 1. Did you, did you manage to catch the highlights? i seen a lot of the reaction. i I seen a bit of the clips as well on the, the SPFL YouTube channel, which, by the way, I totally written the push out of that Japanese... Uh, like the Japanese draw have you noticed that every time a guy for, for Japan scores that it's always like Roger scored like two goals and they put me there first so they could get more views they get more views aye, as well because when they sell cheese it's like they sell for the Japanese player bang but apparently from what i seen it seemed like Aberdeen started well and then um, just done what Aberdeen have been doing and just totally folded uh, that but that was essentially it. I mean, I mean, they scored within three minutes, and then the Ramirez had another chance right after that, and then we didn't look back. Van Veen um, scored a great goal and rubbed it right into Declan Gallagher's face, so I was quite happy about that. And then Connor Shield uh, gets a, a important second right before the break, and we never looked back after that. Uh, but uh, Aberdeen struggling big time, eh? uh, one away, one in fifteen. <laughs> It's it's really strange because at the start of the season a lot of play, a lot of players were saying that Aberdeen were playing really well. I remember listening to Andy, Andy Halliday on Up and Go and he was saying how like Aberdeen were the best team that they played that season that season so far and how how he, he was really enjoying their style of football. So I, you do wonder where it's went wrong for them because you know you've seen it at the start of the se- you've seen when we came up for the break as well getting a draw against Rangers and again they probably could have won and this. They look like a team that could be right up there, but I think that is a testament to how tight the league is as well. Yeah. And not so, I don't necessarily think Aberdeen have been terrible. I just think we're in a state now where every team is so close that, that anybody can be anybody with the old firm. Exactly. Feels like that, it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously Aberdeen sacked their manager after that game. Stephen Glass sacked. Do you think that was the right decision? I don't know because. I think the the question the I think teams should ask themselves before they do this is who are we going to get in? You know what I mean? And and it's his it was his first season in charge. They are they were eighth in the table, but like we say, they're only they're only six points off fourth. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they're only two or three games turn around for being for being right up there. Um I could see them I could see there being more of a reason if they were cut rate adrift, but the Aberdeen fans were really not happy and, and I was listening to a few of his interviews and he, d- he just didn't really sound like he knew how to fix it. That that was kind of a reflective in the game, to be honest with you, Keen. It didn't look as if they had a game plan to actually get back into the game. There was a lot of long balls. Uh, they were forcing it a lot. And um, I think the turning point for the decision for the board was at the end when the Aberdeen players had to walk up the stairs in the south stand and... There was a bit of a, a set two between the players and their own fans. I think Lewis Ferguson exchanged a couple of words between himself and the supporters, and I think that's um, when when you know is when the fans start yeah. having that amount of anger towards you. I think it was the right decision to change. I, I just wonder now how many Aberdeen fans will be looking back and going, should we have sacked Derek McInnes in the first place? Because they finished fourth last year. He had them in cup finals. He had them finishing third, second, the lot, uh, and they decided to sack him. It just shows you that the grass isn't always greener on the other side when you try and change things. Exactly. It's be careful what you wish for. I think with him and he had him in such a stable position for so many years. But it's like, I think the, there needs to be this sort of acceptance like Aberdeen are a really big club but it's almost like they were like why are we not beating Celtic Rangers with Derek McInnes I think there's still that mentality within their supporters mate of um, we should be winning leagues and, and they need to remember and I mean this in the nicest way possible it's not the 80s anymore 
they don't have the mm-hmm. financial capability to be competing with Celtic and Rangers, so if they can finish third every year, which is where they should be, along with the Edinburgh teams in terms of budget, <coughs> um, then that should be their end. But what about my own team? Because obviously I have my opinions. I mean, I think we we lost Tony Watt, which we'll get on to a little bit later on. We are going to talk a bit about that. But um, our first one of 2022, what do you think of the job that Graham Alexander's doing at Mullow? I think he's been a great appointment, to be fair. He's played some great football and, and he's like, I totally revitalised his side, to be fair, from what I've seen. I mean, I think the break, the January break, is sort of stingy a bit and it seems like he's like of have been struggling to sort of get back into the form after that and then obviously losing guys as well but I think that you know his appointment he's obviously a top coach and he's uh, from where I'm sitting he's uh, he's done a really good job so far and there's no reason why he just couldn't be the team that finished fourth yeah um, and we'll move for that game my mother will obviously end at the quarterfinals and uh, alongside Hearts who beat Livingston on penalties uh, by the way I watched the highlights of that game and Livingston had a chance right but Scott Pittman hits the inside of the post and it comes back into Craig Gordon's hands and then and then Hearts go on to win it in penalty kicks um, were you surprised by that result or did you expect Hearts to go through I think on paper you would think that Hearts would go through but Livingston are really, a, a side that have been really underrated I feel like they they are so hard to beat and they seem to just pick up results everywhere like you know so I think that Livingston are probably one of the hardest teams in the league to beat and Hearts have been on a bit of a sorry my nose that I'm locked at that um, Hearts have been on a bit of a strange run of form it seems like they're kind of I think because third place is sort of secured now yeah. and from I mean they've got quite a big gap there so they would take some some claps for 12 games to go and they just seem a bit their team just seems a bit complacent I think watching the highlights for the game on Saturday I think the big miss for them was Barry Mackay he kind of gets some driving for the midfield there wasn't that quick turning transition between midfield and attack um, on Saturday they moved the ball a lot slower they weren't creating as much and he's a big player for them isn't he Barry Mackay he's been a great signing definitely a bit. What I would say about Hearts as well is that, is that um, I've seen a lot of their fans talking about how they're frustrated, about how they're doing. Hello they're Adam Kennedy, how you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that in there. <laughs> it's just so strange to me because it's like you're comfortably, you were, they were in the championship last season yeah. and, and they're comfortably sitting third and you get fans that are in the quarterfinals of the Scottish Cup. Come to the sitting third, and you get fans that are saying we should be doing better. What? How? What is the better they're expecting? What is it they think is going to happen? That's not happening. Adam Kennedy, please let us know in the comments what you think. <laughs> but no, <laughs> it, it goes back to that what we were saying about Aberdeen fans, isn't it? About managing the expectation. I mean, they're mm-hmm. sitting third in a quarter final. They're just promoted last season. They've turned Tyne Castle back into a fortress again. Yet there's still sections of the fans that want to see improvement. It's Mind boggling to me, I don't I don't get it. I mean it come up for the championship and be sitting third by ten, fifteen points when when Hibs were so good last year. You think that that would be like a dream scenario for most Hatters fans? No, no, I know. Um and then what about Livingston? They've picked up as you said at the turn of the year under David Martindale. I think a big thing for them was keeping Alan Forrest um yeah, and the sure. signing of the boy Nubly from our He looks a handful. He does, he definitely does, and I think I really love the way that Livingston are set up off the ball. They're so, you know, close together and they're so tight to get through. Like, I love what Martindale has done and I think that they are a really good shoot for being in, you know, a, a sort of underdog shoot for top six in my opinion just because they seem to pick up results everywhere all the time. And, I mean, Addison Johnson was up the other day was a bit of a surprise, but in general, like, you know, I, I've got... Celtic are facing them away in a few weeks and I'm looking at that fixture being like, nah, I'm sweating for that. I'm <laughs> sweating for that. You as a Celtic <laughs> fan, that'll be because of your record there at um, the Tony Macaroni Arena. You have a terrible, is that terrible a, record there. I mean, even then, but even then when they played Rangers at Ibrox a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of talk about how well they'd done and how you know they, 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 they could have earned a draw at that. And I think that every game they're in, they don't often get hammered. You don't yeah. often see any games yeah. where obviously get beat, you know, convincingly. So there's a, there's a lot of credit has to go to the manager for that. Yeah, they're good at keeping it tight, and then they'll get players like New Play and Forest in attacking areas that can hurt you. So they'll be disappointed to go out the cup, but I think to go out in penalties at Tyne Castles, there's no shame in that because it is it's a really tough place to go. Definitely, and uh, you know, for from 
I think they were up against a team like Hearts that were obviously really determined to get into that quarter final and Livingston gave them a good game and couldn't have, couldn't have came much closer. Yep, and we go from one Hearts to another Hearts. Uh, Kelty Hearts, they, uh, if I was looking at the fixers and trying to pick a shock out of the last 16, I thought they might have given St Mirren a good game and they had a chance early on but Callum Higginbotham couldn't convert it. And St Mirren eventually ran out of 4-0 winners quite comfortably. There was goals too for Greg Kelty and Jordan Jones scored the belter and then Connor Ronan, uh, he just bats one as well but... I, I really like Jim Goodwin St Mirren. I think he identifies his players really well. Um, he uh, he gets the style of play, and you look at that Aberdeen manager's position. He he be a great, to, he be a to great that, shout for that, wouldn't he? Aye, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. There. Like Jim Goodwin, if you're an Aberdeen fan, he's got to be the guy that you're looking at for sure, because it's like they they, they are the form team they now. But since they came back from the the break, they've been so good to watch as well. Like. I think that they really, what he's done with them, they're a team that you would have thought would have been right in the relegation battle, and now you're looking at them potentially finishing top six. I mean, <laughs> we keep, I think when we go through these fixtures, we'll, the words potentially top six <laughs> will come up will come up quite a lot because the league is that tight that, that, that it could be a, a number of teams. I mean, I was saying to you before we came on earlier that um, Motherwell, I'm looking at us going, oh, we're comfortable in fifth, comfortable in fourth the last couple of weeks, and then I look at it, and we're only six points behind Ross County, or in front of Ross County, so that's how tight the league is, uh, and it just, it, it further stamps what you were saying, that anybody can beat anybody, and, and it's it's a great league, it's great for Scottish football, isn't it, for the teams to be that tight, and the teams to be that close? No, it definitely is, I think, this is the most entertaining season we've had for a while, in the sense of, like you say, anyone can finish anywhere. You're sitting fifth, but you can still finish tenth this season. <laughs> it's mental, and but been, I mean, you know, going back to them, that kind of team have been the sort of team that have like, like you say, they've really identified the style of play, and you know, Jim Goodwin is somebody that's going to get a better job at some point, I think. And um, if you're Aberdeen, I would be getting the phone on the phone to him pronto, man. So, no shocks at the Smyzer Stadium, St Man and Thrun. No shocks at Gallabank as well, where Rangers were comfortable 3 0 winners against Annan Athletic. Um, Sakawa's goal was definitely a cross, wasn't it? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's got, I mean, he joked about it on Twitter. I think he joked about it on Twitter saying it was a shot, but I think he was kidding on. And speaking of, speaking of him, he put out a tweet doing a, doing a sue. In qu- quoting Ronaldo uh, and all that, and, and you're like that, mate. It's a way to Alaba for fuck's sake. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no. Alaba, I get. I was get. I get Anna mixed up Alaba. I think about that. Man, just fancy and say, "Well, would Alaba always cheat?" We'll blame it on the yellow taps, mate. All right. <laughs> um, but no, listen. Uh, Drew comfortably, and they they got to give Ramsey his first start, obviously, which was pretty big for them. Yeah. Get, you got 60 minutes in there. And I think Hollander coming back in and scoring, scoring for them is huge because he he's somebody that, you know, from what from Rangers last season to now, a lot of the fans have talked about how they've missed him. Yeah, when he when he's playing their defence is definitely a lot stronger and they look a lot more solid outfit. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Philippe Hollander, but I'm interested to get your opinion on this because I know you're a big Celtic fan, Kieran. That's not any secret here on the podcast. Um, <laughs> my name like Kieran, no, I mean, it's, it's written in the stars so you can Celtic supporter, but no. Uh, how do you think Rangers have been under Gio Van Bronckhorst? Have you been impressed with them if you, if you take the Celtic tinted glasses off and, yeah. and look at them objectively? To be fair, yes, when he came in, if you remember, they had a really tough set of fixtures. Right when he came in the door, after because after they lost to Hibs in the Scottish Cup, in the League Cup semi final, I thought to myself, they've got a really dodgy run here. They were away, they were away to Tain Castle, they were at Easter Road. They had a bunch of tough fixtures coming up, and they came in and they won all those games. You know what I mean? So they really got to a point when I was like, man, this, this team looks really solid. And the time he came in, I, speaking to a couple of Rangers fans, he was he tweaked a couple of things to make them a bit more solid. In defence, and they, they seemed really hard to break down, um, and then uh, I think the break almost is sort of, you know, speak try to speak from that objectively. I think the break sort of stunted their momentum a little bit, yeah. um, and yep. they've came back. Obviously, 
having lost a six point lead already, so that's uh, twelve points against Aberdeen had a terrible performance in the old firm. I mean, that that would be the, the concern is that it's like was that sort of form at the start sort of the the typical kind of manager coming in and gets a bit for the players yeah. type of thing because if I was a Rangers fan, one of, one of my biggest concerns would be what things uh, the kind of thing that Golson said after the after the loss at the League Cup when he was talking about how we don't have the same hunger, we don't have yeah. the same this, and obviously the managers came in and get a boost for the players, but is that going to carry out for the season? What I think, and this is highlights how big Philippe Hollander being back in the side is, um, is that when you've got a left back and Calvin Bassey playing at centre back, your chances of winning a league or winning games are, are, are decreased because you need to be playing players in their natural positions and to get an actual centre back like Hollander back in there. Don't get me wrong, Bassey did a job, but long term, he's not going to do the job that you need him to do in there. You need an actual centre back that's going to command his area. Good in the air, strong physical, and that's exactly what Philippe Hollander is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see now if their form picks up because we've got a tough game that we're going to come on to later on uh, against Under United this weekend. So it's a big, big game for them. But no, um, do you fancy Celtic to win the league before we move on to Celtic? We'll get that in there. Do you fancy Celtic to win the league? I think it's it's shaping up really nicely because for me, you know, if you look at the whole season and the whole way I thought well if we'd got these guys in if we'd got Andrew in earlier <coughs> got the guys in earlier um, I don't think it would be as close to be honest based on what I've seen but at this point I think the, the way it's all shaped up it's going to go right to the wire but I do fancy out just because of the fact that we've the signings we've made have all hit the ground running we've seen it have really good depth in midfield to the f- forward positions now and when I look at the Rangers team they brought in Ramsey and um the Man United guy, I can't remember his name now. Diallo. Diallo. The two, two pretty major signings that are going to boost our squad. So, you know, I think it's fair to say that it's going to be really tight, but I fancy Celtic to nick it. I think it's going to go to the wire, but we spoke about Rangers, let's speak about your own team Celtic. Now, it was a good win for them, 4-0 against Ray Frovers. Um, you sh- I'm really impressed, and this is what I want to touch on, but this is what I want to focus this is what on I'm excited about um, for, 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 for this <laughs> part. is. um. The, the intensity that you can play under under Lance Postacoglu. I mean, I think if you've got any chance of beating Celtic, you have to get through the first half. But it's probably the hardest job in, in, in Scotland just now is keeping Celtic quiet for that length of time because the intensity that you can press teams, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in Scottish football. It's, it's 100 mile an hour. It really, I mean, you've you've said that really well there, mate. I, I can't believe watching it. I watched Celtic win four trebles, man, and and some of the football we played under Rodgers was great. But see that... Is this better? Because that's what I want to get to. Is this style of football better than when it was under Rodgers? Because for me, it is. Yes, I believe so. Because I think that the, the thing with Ange as well is, is it seems like a lot of what Rodgers was doing was keeping possession for possession's sake. Yeah. Um, you know, and the football was great. Let's not get things for staying here. We had an invisible season, one of the trophies. But the thing with Ange is, like you said, the intensity is the intensity of which we play. It's so enjoyable to watch the inverted fullbacks. You know, they come in and act like centre mids, and, it's and like it just works. I don't know what it is. like. See, see, when he came in, I thought, man, this just feels like this is not going to work. Like. Because you don't know who the guy is, you don't know what... But he has this sort of presence about him as well um, that, that I don't think we've had that. You know, Rogers, ro- there was always something kind of... I mean, let's be real about that, right? Ben and Rogers is a pretty weird guy, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, I've never met him, <laughs> like, so Brendan, if you're listening, I, I mean, I've got that and nothing like, do you know what I mean? Did I, you hear, I mean, that, that story that he told about Danny McGreen, Danny McGreen coming and being like, that, that never happened. It's kind of weird. The whole thing is kind of odd, isn't it? Like... Whereas Ange just seems to have this sort of, the players seem to really, resp- you know, because I think when we talk about intensity and you look at like the sides around the world that have great intensity, like your Liverpools and things like that, one of the reasons why that happens isn't just because of the tactical coaching side of it, but the fact that the the players want to go out there and give everything they can for the manager. The manager yeah, I completely agree. And I, what I think it is as well is, he um he he has his philosophy. Obviously, it took this players time to adapt to that philosophy, um, and then 
what he does is he's identified his own signings and you're seeing the difference in January when he has more of a squad that, than, yeah. than just the standard starting 11. I mean, look, for David Dumble, for me, was a, a stick on to get, get a game every, every game. You're now looking at that Celtic midfield with Hattati, O'Reilly, Rogic, McGregor. How, how do you fit David Turnbull into that midfield? I don't see how he gets back in. I mean, that is a great problem to have, though, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about a guy that that is going to get you loads of goals, but like you say, bringing in, I mean, bringing in O'Reilly and Tati, we, the first half of the season, our midfield was McGregor, Tumble, Rodgers, right? And really, I was saying, like, you didn't really have anyone you could bring in that was going to be at the same level. No, now you do. And now you've got two or three options now where you think these guys can come in and Tumble's to come back. This is where, when you, when you were talking about the title and stuff like that as well, like, we get guys like yeah. Tumble and Kyogo that are two of our top Goal scorers this season, and Tomo was our main guy last season as well. So you're like you're adding them back at the team for this running. It's it's there's so much depth there now, and and this team as well. Like just the way that we're playing, um, it's so good to see. Even even last night I was listening to an interview where he was talking about how the roots of Celtic connect with them and how. Because it's it feels an affinity with the club and stuff. Yeah, and and, yeah. and you don't you really don't hear that much for modern day managers. No, no, I agree. Um, so we spoke about Celtic. We're going to go completely to to a small club in Scotland. They're actually part time, but maybe a bit turn full time now. Uh, if they come up for the championship, I broke one Hibs free now. I broke gave Hibs a bit of scary early on. They scored early on through Craig Whiting. But Hibs come back with goals from Mitchell, Nisbet and Muller. So, um, important for Sean Maloney to get the win uh, because he's been struggling in the league. So, to get through to the quarter-final, good for them. But how impressed are you with the job that Dick Campbell's doing at Arbroath? It's, it's really unbelievable. I mean, it's ba- it's kind of gives you views of that Leicester Premier League win, really. I mean, it's obviously totally different in, in all of aspects. But the fact that they're a part-time team... Did they not just get promoted as well? Yeah, yeah I, th- I think they've been in a couple of seasons now, but um, they've kind of uh, like stabilised themselves in the championship. Because it, it's like, I mean, he's another guy where you kind of go, I know he's a bit long in the tooth, so to speak, but you know, if you're a team that are struggling, you must be looking at the job he's doing and thinking, maybe he's worth a wee punt, you know? But he is, he's a character, he's been in the game for that long that he knows the game. And we should get him on here, man. Oh, be class. To get D- Dick Campbell, if you're listening, please come on, honestly. That is like a dream guest. <laughs> get Dick Campbell on the podcast. But, the uh, no, listen, what our both are doing, are, it's crazy. See, even watching them play Kermanic, you kind of thought that was going to be the game where the bubble was yeah. going to burst. And the fact I went that up to that game and Kermanic never really laid a glove on them. And that just shows you that this hype is real and we may very well have a team that's a part-time team in the Premier League. A broth in FIFA 23. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, this guy has got to be... If he gets him the, the championship this season, he's got to be manager of the year. Yeah, There's definitely. No about it. Absolutely, 100%. I'd agree with that. Uh, what about Sean Maloney? What about the job that he's doing at Hibs? Do you, do you think that he'll get it right? Do you think he'll turn around the fortunes, or do you think that he's trying to play football that Belgian players are capable of, <laughs> with, with, with players that are good enough to play for him? I think there's there's a lot to be said about Maloney's style, but you think you need to give a guy time. You know, um, he just came in, and this isn't his squad really. I know he's made a couple of signings, but there's a lot of players there that have been at his for years, and it kind of feels like a lot of them don't really want to be there from what I can see Nisbet I don't know what's happened to him but he just doesn't look that interested anymore and I think uh, they moved to Birmingham do you remember that came up they had the opportunity yeah. to move to Birmingham last year it didn't go through uh, I think since then he's, he's dropped a wee bit hasn't it it seems like it and I think they're going to need, probably have a few um, ins and outs in the summer and I think it's important to give him a lot of time because he's came in you know he's travelled the world in different areas and he knows a lot about the game if you're going to appoint him, you can't appoint him thinking he's going to, you know, be amazing right away. On to what I think is guaranteed to be a bottom six club, I think we can all safely say that. Dundee, comfortable 3 0 winners last night in Peterhead, although they went to go up, and apparently, from what I'm hearing, apologies, I've never seen the game. Peterhead said they had a penalty at 1 0. It was an absolute stonewall penalty kick, man. It's unbelievable they never gave this. See, you watch it, the guy, 
comes around and the keeper just takes him out like a rugby tackle. It was, not only was it apparently, but it's a potential red card there. There like, you go. So that's potentially a game changing situation. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I watched a lot of the first half. Peter Head, I was really impressed with how they were, the movement on the ball and how the kind of expansion of football they were playing. They were really trying to keep the ball on the deck and playing some good stuff. And it was really impressive how they were going about it. I think they were quite unfortunate to go down, to go into the break 1 0. And that decision really changes the outlook of the whole game. Two goals, the two goals in the second half kind of come from pretty head tired in a bit and and Dundee's kind of premiership quality coming through. But, you know, Saints are good for pretty head. If they keep playing that way, they'll be totally fine. Yeah. And what do you think of Dundee? Will they be fine? Because they're struggling in the, the, uh, the premiership at the minute. I think a big player for them is the signing of Zach Rudden. That's somebody that I would have liked to have seen at Motherwell. Um, do you think they have enough to stay up? Well... As far as I'm aware, for the, sec- the 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 second bottom place is a playoff place in it, so they would still have it. So I think basically between them and St Judgment is a battle to see who's not definitely going to get relegated. Um, and a question of it looks as if the playoff game could be against the likes of Kilmarnock. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. But I think that Dundee do potentially have the ability to stay up through winning that playoff game against whoever it may be. But they're definitely going to be second, bo- at least second bottom. And St. Johnson just beat Leveson there, and 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 they look like they look like they're going to put up a fight. But at the same time, Dundee have just went went and won at Ten Castle. So you know it's really hard to say how it's going to go. But right now, you would say Dundee is not looking particularly great because St. Johnson finished finished really well last year, won two cups. They were fourth last year, weren't they? Third. Third, they, were th- they were third last year. I'm sure Hibs were third. Hibs were third last year, wasn't it? I'm positive it was St Johnson, but we'll check that and we'll rectify I'm, it. For the um, but uh, St Johnson, I've still got a really good manager. I've still got a really good team, and they're not going to want to finish t- bottom of the table. So um, I'm really cu- even. That's just what we're saying about the league as well for Scottish football. You're looking at the league, you're going all the way through it from ten to four. You get a few points, but even just the bottom two. Between the two as well. Who's going to finish bottom? Who's going to? How are the playoffs going to go? There's a lot of excitement so let's there. Let's get your prediction in. Who is going to finish bottom? Dundee or St Johnson? I think it's between the two. Now. Yeah, for sure, definitely between the two of them. I, if, if I had to pick them, out, I would probably say uh, St Johnson will finish bottom. There you go. So Dundee will be in the playoffs, and St Johnson will go over the way. Yeah, it's quite good to tie in with that wee prediction there because we now get on to the prediction part of the show. Yeah, but we're going to look at the Scottish Cup quarter-final line-up. Uh, and all I want for you is a name. When I read out the ties, I want a name of who's going to go through. Uh, and then we'll get a semi-final line-up for them. Right, so Hearts v St Mirren. Who wins it? St Mirren. St Mirren, so he's went for St Mirren. I'm going to go Hearts on penalties. So these will be appearing on screen, so we'll see who's right. We can come back to this that later day and see who gets it right. Dundee United v Celtic. Celtic. Celtic after extra time for me. I think that will be a tight affair. I don't think that's an easy place to go to on the dice. Definitely isn't. I mean, I think that kind of pitch suits us, though, because we quite a wide pitch and we won 3-0 earlier this season, so I'm, I'm relatively confident. Good job that we spoke about Dundee United there, because we do need to touch on them. They won against Partick Fizzle. Ian Hart's getting the goal. Um, but we need to talk about this. Sorry, I completely I skipped by that there. Um, Tony Watt. Moving yes, to Dundee United. Now, I want an outsider's opinion on this. Do you think that it is for the money? I mean, let's not kid ourselves on here. It's got to be 100% for the money. If you look the table, there's nothing in the table to separate the two teams. And f- I I was listening to, you know, there was obviously a bit of a, a, bit of a confrontation between How Tony Watt. Tony Watt and Alan Burrows. Alan yes. Burrows came out and said nothing happened. Tony Watt came out and says that they were nearly wrestling. So make up your mind that <laughs> what actually happened. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, he was talking about... I was listening to some of the comments he made and it just didn't really sound right because what he was saying was that he, ha- he had to be selfish and he had to... Um, when he came out and he scored that goal for them against Motherwell... He, he realised why he had to why he joined there because they were all chatting his name and all Listen, that. Listen, I I need to be honest with you. I'm a Motherwell fan, right? But obviously, if it's improving his life financially, if it is um, 
a better place for them to live because I think it stays up near Dundee and makes complete sense for them to go there. And I will say that some of the shouts for the Wuddle supporters were disgusting that night. Um, mm. Because he did do well for us. As much as we did well for them, he did. He did do well for us. And listen, um, he get the last laugh because he gets an assist and he gets a goal in that game. So, aye. well, see, I mean, I totally. Get, I, it takes a lot of uh, you know objectivity to say something like that from a mother point of view. But what I didn't really get from what he was saying was it just felt like. You know, you guys obviously wanted him to sign the contract. You wanted him to stay, from, I'm sure. And you wanted more money, I think. That's yeah. But the point he was making was, it was almost like he was saying that Dundee United fans were more grateful to have him, which kind of came a kick. No, they're obviously going to be more grateful because they do have him. I think Aye. fans would be grateful just, if they signed that contract. It came across pretty poor for me. And for the outside looking in, I, if I was a Motherwell fan, I'd be thinking, well... What he, what he didn't do, and this is from a mother fan's perspective, is she pointing to the badge, pointing to the tough, doing that thing with the pen where you're signing as I'll be signing on the team. These were all things that didn't help no, him when, for he, sure when not. he left. And I think that there's ways to leave a football club, and I don't think Tony Watt went about it the right way. And I think that's where, where the animosity comes. Totally, mate, sports. but for sure. And you look at it and you go, well, he actually, you know, Motherwell re- revitalised his career. He was going nowhere. Well, he was known more for YouTube than he was his football and ability. He, he spoke about how Alan Borders brought brought him to the club and showed a lot of faith in him and made him his top, you know, he was the top goal scorer in the league for a while there. And you just think that, you know, in that situation, he's been everywhere. He's been he's played for Hearts. He's been to other teams in the league and he's ended up Motherwell and he's got really good form. I don't, you know, people talk about loyalty and football and money and all that, but from Tony Watt's point of view, I I would have thought get you know at least give him this season. Yeah, he, yeah, he, I'd agree. Give him the end of the season. He could have easily done that, and you know, doing that whole celebration as well. When you know that they've, when you know Motherwell have helped you that much with, with your football career, and probably his life in a lot of ways, to do that kind of celebration, it kind of it does leave you thinking. Ah, exactly, that's it. But yep, so Keenan's got his first two semi finals, Sibbin and Celtic, and I've went with Hearts and Celtic. So on to the next one in Dundee versus your Rangers. Uh, Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having it. No, uh, no, I think Rangers will win that comfortably. Dundee's focus is obviously on yeah. staying up, and I think that Rangers would, would enjoy trying to get to hand in for a change. I mean, it's no like Rangers, and this is no disrespect to Dundee, I'm just talking about on paper, but it's no like Rangers to get the easiest draw of the, the round, is it? It's no like Yeah, I've never seen that before. It's not as if they've done it in the last two previous, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm going to go Rangers through quite comfortably there as well. I think 3 0 victory for Rangers there. This is the one that I'm interested to get your opinion on. Motherwell versus Hibsugas doing that one, because that's tied around for me. What's really interesting about this is there's a lot of pressure on him because you're looking at if Hearts go through, which a lot of people were fancying them to go through, you're looking at a potential two semi finals where you've got Hearts have Celtic Rangers type of thing. And um, and so there's a lot of pressure on Hibs to kind of be in that pot. But I just think that Maloney's focus might be more so on making sure they finish top six. And they might just take that out of the ball. I think Motherwell might want it that bit more. So I'm going to go with Motherwell. I'm feeling pretty confident. Hibs' form at the minute is terrible. They put us in the quarterfinal last year. I think it's time for payback. I think Mother will go through, and I think we go through 2 1. And I think. Uh, so that's my semi final lineup. It's Hearts, Celtic, Rangers, Motherwell, and you've went with St. Mirren, Celtic, Rangers, and Motherwell. So we're pretty close. It's only the really way St. Mirren and Hearts that we're disagreeing on. Who will win the Scottish Cup? Celtic. I would obviously going to say that, but I do think that unless the my only hope for Mother will win it is that they'll for them get each other in the semi. Yeah, uh, and we play one of them in the final. And we have a really good day in the final. That's that's my only hope for winning it. I think if we get for sure. Celtic or Rangers in the semis, we can forget it. But it's been good to get to this point in the cup, and I do fancy us to get a trip to Hamden, and hopefully, hopefully we can get a good draw in the semi and get to a final. That's that's the beauty of the cup when you get to the quarterfinal stage. You start looking at it and going, we've got a chance to get in here. And you know, I know that people would say, obviously, that I'm going to say Celtic, but it's based on the fact that we we won the league cup early on in the season and we just look like a team that are really focused on the competitions. But in saying that, um, 
Then again, in a way, is it kind of game where that could be a potential banana skin? Yeah, I think it's a, the tougher, t- one of the tougher ties that he's going to go. So, I know it definitely is, and I think that that might give, you know, one of us could very well go out in that, you know, even the both both Celtic and Rangers having two away ties makes that a bit more interesting for the next round, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the cup to the league now, what we're going to do here is we're going to give it a three points for the correct score and one point for mm-hmm. getting the result right. So if your team, you pick a team to win and they win, but you don't get the result right, it's one point. And if you uh, predict the score and get it right, you get three. So you can let us know in the comments what you got your predictions are for the week's, uh, weekend's fixtures as well. So we'll start off. Hibs v County. What's your score prediction for that one? Do you know what? I've missed doing this as well. I remember doing this before. It was like... Uh, I was terrible at it. I think the, the people in the comments were I more accurate than us. Better than us, better than us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> Hibs, Hibs County just kind of sort of screams a bit of a draw to me because I think, I mean, you would think that Hibs are due a, a, a we run here, but I think Ross County are looking really good recently. So I fancy a, a draw there. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go one each. One each. I'm going to go. For the shock, I'm going, oh, you could say it's a shock, maybe no way they form. I'm going to go 2-1, Ross County, I think Ross County will beat them. Uh, next up, Livingston against St Mirren, two sides in good form. Uh, is that another draw? I think so, mate. I think that's a draw. I think that's probably going to be a no-no. No-no. Still, mate. Don't go to the Tony Macaroni Arena if uh, Keenan's predictions aren't to go by. I'm going to go for St Mirren to sneak that 1-0. So there's two away wins. No. Before we get into this one, just bear in mind that Mother will beat Aberdeen three times to play them this season. Mother will beat Aberdeen. Well, Mother will make it four out of four. Or will Aberdeen get payback for that um, cup defeat? Well, the, I think they're catching Aberdeen at a good time. The man, they just, they've obviously just beat, you know, Mother will just beat Aberdeen in the cup and they've set the manager. So, you know, I fancy, I would fancy Mother will take it. It's, it just, it's really, it depends on what Aberdeen decides to show up that day. I would say Aberdeen will take, take the result, yeah. I'm uh, going to go a one old draw there. I think Aberdeen may get something. Is it Mother will at home? Mother, yeah, but I think, Aber- I think Aberdeen will be a wee bit harder to beat. Um, aye, aye, I, I, can see, I can see why you would go there, but Mother will, I think, have struggled to get results for the past few weeks. So I'm going 1 1 with your score. I'm going to go 2 1 to Mother will. Mother will repeat the cup score. Um, are you. Big game for St Johnston at home to Hearts. Hearts favourites for that one, surely? Yeah, but, you know, Hearts have been really weird the last few weeks, I think. They just lost to Dundee there, and they look all over the place in terms of the shape of the ball. I've just, I've been paying a bit of attention to them. They don't seem very organised at the moment. I don't really know what's going on, but they just look like they're leaking goals at the back. And uh, St Johnston are in the fight of the lights. I'm going to go for a bit of a... Shock 1 0 win for St Johnson in that. Always oh, went for the shock. I'm going to go keep it simple 2 0 hearts. I think that they'll get uh, the points there. On to the Sunday fixtures and a real, real tough one for Rangers as they travel with Tannadice to face Dundee. Come United on, man. There like a cup. I've got a feeling that Keenan's going to predict a wee shock kid. I don't know why is that maybe today with the team he supports. I don't know. Keenan, what's your prediction for Dundee United v Rangers? Look, I, I can promise one thing, and that is I'll try and stay as objective as possible. The reason why this show ended for so long is because I couldn't bear to be on here during, <laughs> during last season, so I apologise for anyone that was enjoying it. Um, no, listen. Uh, from a, from my personal point of view, this you're looking at this game and going, I'm begging for Dundee United to pick up a point here. I'm begging for it, man. But they beat them early on in the season one 0 there. If you remember, yep. uh, this was back when Gerard. Uh, it was the first defeat, I think, because um, they had that unbeaten team. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was the first defeat, and that was a bit of a shock result. But the thing is, is that you, <laughs> it's very rare that happens twice in a season, and. It, I just I feel like because they lost one now early in the season, Rangers will come and obviously I mean obviously they have other reasons to be up for it, but because they lost one now before, they'll come really really intent on making sure that doesn't happen again. And Dundee United have been shaky as much as they just they picked up a couple of results in recent weeks. They they have been a bit of a yo yo team, and so I do think objectively Rangers will pick up the three points and probably a two 0 victory. I'm going to go 2-1 to Rangers I think it will be tight but I think 
Rangers will score late on, um, and that'll be a big, a big boost to them uh, in the title chase. Just uh, going forward, so I'm going to go 2-1 Rangers. Um, this one writes itself, I think Celtic v Dundee, I'll kick us off, 4-0 Celtic. 4-0, oh, no, I, I would take that. Um, I think what's really interesting about this though is that Rangers had the early kick-off, so it's going to put a bit of pressure on Celtic going in knowing that if... Point. If Rangers do pick up the three points, then you go in knowing that they're top of the table. We need to win to get back to the top. So, but then there's also pressure if they drop points <laughs> and you can extend that lead. So, yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, that, that is the thing. There's there's a bunch of things about it that is going to be interesting. But I think that you, you go in, you're going into the game that 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 result. <laughs> you know, people people that say these results, you know, they're like kickoffs don't matter and don't affect the game. I think they do. They affect the atmosphere. Maybe not the players necessarily, but, but the fans. for sure they. I mean, you you've seen <laughs> Rangers fans singing about we shall not be moved as Aberdeen made it to each for about a minute mm-hmm. the other day there, so that was hilarious. But um, I think that, that that just shows you how much the results can affect the atmosphere in the ground, and I think that if if Rangers do convincingly beat Dundee United, um, there'll be a bit of nervousness depending on how long the game goes now now. So that could be an interesting factor, but I do expect Celtic to get the job done, and I would say I w- I'll go for 3-0. 3-0 Celtic, so there you go, you have our predictions. Let us know yours in the comments, and thank you very much for listening to this pre-match meal. Come back with myself and Keenan Burns from the All About Ability podcast. Would you like to see this happen every week? This is something that we're thinking of bringing back, but we do need your feedback in the comments, that is vital. Uh, what do you think of the new studio setup? I really love it. Uh, thanks to guys here at Sunny G's. I probably me set up easy got here and um if you want it <laughs> we'll be back next week with another pre match meal. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.